Hello friends, welcome back to Cross the Hub. And today we are going to discuss a new topic that is dental ceramics. So to those who are new to this channel, myself Dr. Jolsna, and through this channel Cross the Hub, I discuss some of the important prosthodontic topics which you may find useful while preparing for your university exam. So the discussion is um, completely on an exam basis. And let us see what all questions can come from the topic dental ceramics. So usually students find dental ceramics as a cumbersome topic because it is very vast and you really don't know where to begin with while preparing for your exams. So dental ceramics as such can come as a question or it can come as reason advances in ceramics and castable ceramics, the methods of strengthening ceramics and transformation toughening are important short notes. So you can expect question from dental ceramics as a long essay or short essay and even it can come as a uh, 100 mark question in your paper 4. So this is a, one of the most important topic which you should not omit while preparing for your exams. Now let's see the contents. So the contents include introduction, definitions, the various classifications, structure and composition of ceramics, the properties, manufacturing and processing steps, strengthening of ceramics, all ceramic restorations, the reasoned advances and conclusion finally references. So I always advise students to include this content list at the beginning of your answer because this will give the examiner an idea of what all you know about this topic which will gain you more marks. So before getting into detail I request everyone to please do like and share my videos and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and support me. If you have any queries or feedbacks you can either comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id. So let's start. Introduction. So the word ceramics has derived from the Greek word keramos which means burnt stuff. So this means that the material is produced by burning or firing. Now the American Ceramic Society has defined ceramics as an inorganic non-metallic material typically crystalline in nature and they are compounds formed between metallic and non-metallic elements like aluminum oxygen, calcium oxygen, etc. So basically this is an inorganic compound with non-metallic properties typically composed of metallic and non-metallic elements. Now ceramic represents one of the ma four major classes of materials that is used for reconstruction of decayed, damaged or missing teeth. The other three classes are metals, polymers and composites. And it was the French surgeon Nicolas Dubois de Chemont who patented the first porcelain tooth material and it was Dr. Charles Land who patented the first ceramic crowns in the year 1903. Coming to definitions, so GPT-9 defines ceramic as compound of one or more metals with a non-metallic element usually oxygen. So they are formed of chemical and biochemically stable substances that are strong, hard, brittle and inert non-conductors of thermal and electrical energy. So the ADA specification number given to dental ceramics is 69. And porcelain is defined as a ceramic material formed of infusible elements which are joined by lower fusing materials. So most dental porcelains are glasses and are used in fabrication of teeth for dentures, pontics and facings, metal ceramic restoration including fixed dental processes as well as all ceramic restorations like crowns, laminate, veneers, inlays, onlays and other restorations. So porcelain is just simply a specific type of ceramics and uh, made by mixing kaolin, quartz and feldspar in proper proportioning and fired at high temperature. Next is the classification of ceramics. So ceramics can be classified in one of four categories as per Anusavis that is uh, silicate ceramics which is characterized by the amorphous glass phase example is the dental porcelain then oxide ceramics that contain a principal crystalline phase like alumina the non-oxide ceramics which has high processing temperature complex processing methods and high degree of opacity and so not used in dentistry and finally glass ceramics that is the ceramics that contain a glass matrix phase and at least one crystal phase. And there are many other numerous classifications of ceramics based on their indication, composition, firing temperature, processing method, 
microstructure and translucency. So let us see one by one. According to use or indication of ceramic, it is divided into anterior bridges, posterior bridges, inlays, crowns, veneers, post and core, FPDs, stained ceramic, glaze ceramic, danger teeth, etc. As per the composition, ceramic can be classified as feldspathic porcelain, pure alumina, pure zirconia, silica glass, lucite based glass ceramic and lithium based glass ceramic. Now based on firing temperature, Anusav is classified ceramics as high fusing, medium fusing, low fusing and ultra low fusing whereas Schillingberg classified it as high fusing, medium fusing and low fusing. So this high fusing is usually used for uh, fabrication of denture teeth. The medium fusing ones used for uh, bridges and inlays. The low fusing veneers over cast metal crowns and ultra low fusing is used with titanium and its alloys. Next, according to the processing method, so first one is condensation and sintering. So the feldspathic porcelain that is in the traditional TFM restoration are condensed by vibration and sintered at high temperature. Then comes the pressure molding and sintering. So here the pressable ceramics like IPS Empress when heated and subjected to hydrostatic pressure it flows into a mold and after removal and divesting it is sintered. Then comes the casting and ceramic. So here example is a die core. These are made using lost wax technique. So here the molten glass is cast into a mold, heat treated to form a glass ceramic and then it is colored with shading porcelain and also surface stains. Then comes the slip casting, sintering and glass infiltration. So here for slip cast ceramics, a slurry of liquid and particles of alumina, magnesia, zirconia is placed on a dry refractory dye and this dye draws out the water from the slurry. So the remaining slip cast deposit is sintered and then it is coated with a slurry of glass face layer. And during this firing, the glass melts and infiltrates the porous ceramic core. So that is slip casting, sintering and glass infiltration. And then translucent porcelain veneer is fired onto the core to provide the final contour and color. And finally milling by computer controlled CAD CAM. So here we know that the ceramic block materials are shaped into inlays or crowns using a computer aided designing, computer aided milling or machining system which is called as the CAD CAM process. So this is a classification of ceramics based on their processing methods. Next, according to the microstructure, ceramics can be classified as crystalline, non-crystalline that consists of amorphous solids or glasses and crystal that contain glass. So the mechanical and the optical properties of dendral ceramics actually depend upon the nature and the amount of crystalline phase that is present. So we'll discuss in detail about this in the structure of ceramics. Based on translucency, ceramics can be opaque, translucent and transparent. Coming to the structure of ceramics. So the structure of ceramic material is dictated by the type of atoms present and the type of bonding between these atoms and also the way the atoms are packed together. So the atoms in ceramic materials are held together by a chemical bond. It can be a covalent or an ionic bond. So the basic structure of a ceramic is a silicon oxygen tetrahedron in which the silicon cation is positioned at the center of the tetrahedron and with oxygen anions at each of the four corners. So this is a silicon cation with oxygen anions at each of these four corners. So this is one silica unit and uh, such silica units link with each other to form a chain configuration. So this is a basic structure that is a silicon oxygen tetrahedron that are linked together by sharing their corners. Now based on the microstructure we said that we have classified ceramics as crystalline and non-crystalline ones. So the non-crystalline means that consists of amorphous solid or glasses. So when this glassy phase is more it will impart more translucency to ceramics but it weakens the structure. Whereas if crystalline phase is more it will have better mechanical properties. 
So these conventional porcelains or the felspathic porcelains are usually non-crystalline ceramics. So they are weak and brittle in nature, leading to fracture even under low stresses. So ceramics has to be reinforced with crystalline inclusions such as alumina and lucite into this glass matrix and they form crystal glass composites as a part of strengthening the material. So this improves the fracture resistance. So dental ceramics are mainly composed with crystalline minerals and glass matrix. So these crystalline minerals include feldspar, quartz and alumina and uh, kaolin as the glass matrix. And it was Maclean and Hughes who introduced the first generation of this reinforced porcelain for the porcelain jacket crowns which were generally referred as aluminous porcelains. So this was in order to strengthen the basic ceramic structure. Coming to the composition of dental ceramics, so we said that dental ceramics are mainly composed with crystalline minerals and a glass matrix. So the crystalline mineral, the first one is feldspar, which is a naturally occurring mineral and it's composed of two alkali aluminum silicates, that is potassium aluminum silicate and a sodium aluminum silicate. So this is responsible for forming the glass matrix and it is the lowest melting component that is the which melts first on firing. Then comes kaolin which is a type of clay material and act as a binder. So this increases the moldability of unfired porcelain and it also imparts opacity to the porcelain restoration. Then is the silica which act as the filler material which strengthens the fired porcelain restoration and it remains unchanged at the firing uh, temperature and thus it maintains the stability of the mass. And then comes the alkali which act as glass modifiers or can be used as fluxes. They lowers the softening temperature and increases the fluidity. Alumina again acting as a glass former and flux. Color pigments are uh, given to modify the colors and stains are given uh, for imparting natural appearance and opacifiers like zirconium and uranium oxides which reduces transparency. So this is the basic composition of dental ceramics. So here is a table that illustrates the detailed composition of dental ceramics. So here you can see feldspar which is responsible for forming the glass matrix, silica, the filler, kaolin, the binder, glass modifiers that act as flux, color pigments and also the oxides that is acting as the uh, opacifiers. Next, let us see the physical and mechanical properties of ceramics. So dental ceramics exhibit excellent biocompatibility with the oral soft tissues and they are also chemically inert in the oral cavity and they possess excellent aesthetics and they got high resistance to the compressive stresses and are poor under tensile and shear stresses. So this imparts a brittle nature to the ceramics and they tend to fracture under tensile stresses. Then they are good thermal insulators and their coefficient of thermal expansion is close to that of the natural tooth and they also possess excellent optical properties. So this is the table that illustrates the physical and mechanical properties of dental ceramics and here you can see that it has got a high compressive strength whereas very low tensile and shear strength and ceramics they also exhibit very high surface hardness hence they can abrade the opposing natural or artificial teeth and the thermal conductivity is very less that is they are good thermal insulators and their coefficient of thermal expansion is almost close to that of natural tooth. Let us discuss the manufacturing of conventional porcelains. So we know that the feldspathic porcelains are too weak to be used as all ceramic restorations and hence should be supported with a metal coping. So in the classification we have said that the conventional porcelains are manufactured by means of condensation and sintering. So when the potassium feldspar is mixed with various metal oxides and fired to a high temperature, it forms lucite and a glass face that will soften and flow slightly. So it is an important property of feldspar that is a tendency to form crystalline mineral lucite when it is heated at temperature between 1150 to 1530 degrees Celsius. So the procedure is called as incongruent melting to form crystals of lucite in a liquid glass. So that is a procedure by which one material melts to form a liquid plus a different crystalline material. 
and uh, the softening of this glass phase allows the porcelain powder to coalesce together by means of liquid phase sintering so that is a procedure by which the particle coalesce together to form a dense solid and then the mix of lucite and glassy phase is cooled very rapidly in water which is called as quenching and that causes the mass to shatter into small fragments and this product obtained is called as frit and this frit is ball milled to achieve proper particle size distribution and then the coloring pigments are added in small quantities to obtain the delicate shades necessary to mimic the natural teeth so this is the basic manufacturing procedure of ceramics now this conventional dental porcelain material is usually supplied as a kit that contains the fine ceramic powders in different shades of enamel dentin and core and special liquid or distilled water that act as the binder stains and color modifiers and also glazes and add on porcelains now this dental porcelain restorations are made by mixing the ceramic powder of selected shades with distilled water or that special liquid which is the binder in order to form a plastic mass and then this is condensed either directly on a refractory die or a matrix and then shaped into the desired form and then it is fused or sintered in a furnace by firing to develop the translucent tooth like material and this is called as the fused porcelain now various method we have already discussed in our classification that is condensing and sintering pressure molding and sintering casting and ceramic slip casting sintering and glass infiltration and by cat cam process however fabrication of a conventional porcelain restoration is basically consisting of four stages that is porcelain application and condensation firing or sintering glazing and finally cooling so these are the four basic steps the next topic to be discussed is methods of strengthening of ceramics which is a very important short note and this will be continuing in our next session thank you one and all for watching this session please do hit the like button if you have really liked this video and please do share my videos if you are new to this channel pro shop please do subscribe and support me and if you have any queries or feedbacks you can either comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so it's a bye from prof sahab until our next session